Welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, the host city of NAB 2014. We're here on the 45th floor of the Trump International Hotel. This is Cinema 5D on the couch. Presented by B&H, the professional's source. Vitech Videocom, Tools on Air, and Zeiss. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cinema 5D on the couch. Today we have Tab from Freefly, the famous makers of the famous movie. Um, what's new from Freefly at NAB? Um, so we released our movie controller at, at uh, NAB, which is kind of a professional solution for controlling the movie. Allows you to have pan, tilt, roll control. In addition, uh, we'll be releasing in the future a receiver that'll allow you to have focus iris and zoom control. Um, we also released uh, M15, which is a bigger version of the Movi. Uh, the M this is the first show that the M5 has been at. It started shipping about a month ago, uh, so people have really been enjoying that one. Um, we, al we also just a couple little things. We made a Casey from Mindcastle uh, had the idea to build kind of a carbon fiber ring to put on the Movi to allow for easier handoffs. He came into my office one day with a hula hoop uh, wrapped in uh, gaff tape. <laughs> and said, you know, I think it'd be really cool. And we took it and attached it to the movie really quick and played with it and thought, hey, this is great. So we made it and the first production ones just came in. So we brought those to the show and showed them for the first time today, or first time this week. And uh, I think the only other thing we showed is a, an iPhone uh, adapter that allows you to shoot with an iPhone on the M5. Cool. Yeah, Yeah. actually, the, the ring is a good idea. I mean, <coughs> I'm a movie owner myself, as you know, and uh, the handoff is sometimes an issue because sometimes yeah. I use the top handle to attach monitor or some other stuff, so yep. it's not really available always. So, you know, it, it, you need to find a way to give it to somebody else sometimes. Yeah, you know, uh, when Casey did that, we kind of thought it was a joke and ha ha, it's funny, <laughs> it looks like a fig rig or whatever. Uh, and then when we finally made it and started playing with it at the shop, it's, it was one of those things that was really simple and a really obvious idea. But once you actually play with it, you think, that wow, this is really great. It just allows you to grip anywhere you want and easily hand between two people. So cool. th it'll be a fun toy for uh, Moby owners. Yeah. yeah. So the past year has been quite a ride for you guys, I guess, since the Moby was announced with Vincent Lafrey's, uh film exactly one year ago, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it seems like it's been much longer. <coughs> because it sure does. <laughs> everybody and their mom is now making a similar rig. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about what happened? I mean, what happened for your company and what happened with all the others? Uh, so first off, I think for FreeFly, it's been just an unbelievable year. Uh, we've had such a blast to just, to, you know, we brought the prototype units to NAB last year to show, kind of debut to the world, to then go back, work really hard to deliver all these orders. Um, and then, you know, that was a, really, a lot of work, but fun. But then to see, you know, after people got it, learned how to use it, to start to see the amazing stuff that actual users were creating flood in. There's, I mean, there's just no better feeling than to create a product and then see people actually be successful with it. And then to get the feedback from them to say, you know, I could have never done this shot this way, or I couldn't have done this job any other way, or, you know, I never dreamed of using it this way, but it really helped. I mean, that's just been, that's been really fun. Uh, as far as the copycats, um, I think it's inevitable. Uh, the, the nice thing about this show, um, we had a lot of people coming around that had, you know, walked down what we call Gimbal Alley, where there's like 30 or 50 <laughs> or whatever, Alley, yeah. whatever <laughs> knockoffs. Um, and I think people are understanding that there's a difference between what, what we've done with the Movi and everything else. So that's nice because, you know, for six months ago, people were saying all these things are coming out and they're identical and they're much cheaper and blah, blah, blah. But I think now, you know, the, the market's realizing that there's a difference between what we do and what everybody else does. It's true, yeah. I think, I guess, it's, this is the first big show in the US where you see all the others. In, the, in Europe, I was at IBC last yep. year and already there, that was six months after the announcement of the M10, I think. Yeah. Already there, you had a lot of copies. And uh, yeah, and I had the same experience, to be honest. I mean, uh, they're just not quite there yet, you know. Yeah, I mean... It, I being on the development team for the movie, I was always shocked at these people that would put up a rendering of some product and say it's better than the movie and a third the price. And I'm like, you know, these guys clearly don't understand what it takes to get all the way there because it's a, it's a hell of a lot of work and it takes a really good team to do it. So um, we tend to try and under promise and over deliver with our products. Mm. There was also a lot of discussion about, we talked about it before the show, uh, that, you know, people thought that's the steady cam killer or whatever. Yeah. But what do you think about that? 
Yeah, I think that was really unfortunate last year that uh, <laughs> the movie was kind of brought about in the Steadicam killer fashion. Because, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Steadicam. Um, I sent Garrett Brown an email probably almost a decade ago asking him for help when I was back in the helicopter days. And uh, I've always been a huge fan of his, not just for Steadicam, but for all the innovations that he's done along the way from Steadicam to Skycam to just, you know, he, he's invented every every different way to move a camera in some kind of elegant fashion. So um, I don't think it's a Steadicam killer at all. In fact, we were really most excited to get it into the hands of Steadicam operators because as a group, those people are certainly the best and most skilled at moving the camera. I mean, that's what for me, it's not really about whatever particular tool you use to move the camera. It's just knowing how to move the camera that creates compelling shots. Cool. Yeah. How did you guys get to make the movie? I mean, you are shooters, right? Yeah. So uh, it started off, I, I come from an aviation background, so I've always been obsessed with anything that flies. My dad is a helicopter pilot, so I spent my childhood riding around in the you know, the passenger seat of a helicopter with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then went to school for something kind of completely unrelated to film and video. And I flew, I uh, drove past a park that had remote control helicopters and kind of from that moment became obsessed with them and the idea of putting cameras on them. Um, and when I first started, you know, I'd fly them around and it would look all smooth and nice and you'd land in uh, very rudimentary ways to attach the camera to the helicopter. Maybe so hopeful that the footage would be great, and then you'd review it, and it was just terrible in the <laughs> beginning. You know, I tell the, I tell the story like the first BMW commercial that we ever worked on, the car went through the frame. We had no control of it; just it happened to go through the frame, and it was a huge success back then. You know, it was like, wow, we actually captured the car going through the frame, and now the technology's evolved to the point where you know we're sitting at a director's monitor, and people are people are arguing about pixels. So yeah. it's been. It's been quite the progression from just absolutely terrible stuff to pretty pretty good stuff now. Yeah. So you started with production and then you moved into making helico um, drones and. Stuff. Yeah. So we have a sister company, Freefly Cinema, that uh, f does filming, and there's a team of guys that we've kind of amassed that are the best helicopter guys in the world, and we still go out and do film. You know, we film for hire for interesting productions. So we started off with that, and then. You know, we we built these systems um, with the aim to make free fly cinema be able to get sm better, smoother shots. Uh, then along the way, we had a lot of people request to buy them, so we we kind of toyed with the idea of starting a company that would produce and sell stuff, kind of thinking that it would just be a fun side business. Um, turns out that we were completely wrong, and that business became much bigger than free fly cinema within the first six months. So, oh, wow. I think the fact that we have those two companies and we are shooters, it's really helped ensure that the products are authentic and work well because it's, I'm not just selling this stuff, I'm actually taking it out on Tuesday to shoot on the Wolf of Wall Street, stuff like that. So it really has to work because there's nothing worse than showing up and having your stuff not work and yeah. you know looking like you don't know what you're doing. Cool. So the Wolf of Wall Street, what, what did you shoot there and uh, which, which part of the film? Uh, we shot um, primarily low-level aerials with Octocopter. So the Canon, Canon kind of made the connection with that uh, team for us. We've done a lot of stuff over the years with Canon. And Rob Legato was using the, the unreleased, at that point, C500. Um, so we kind of got the camera a few days before the shoot and quickly integrated it into the octocopter and got some really nice stuff. Nice. Yeah. So what's next for Freefly? Hard to say. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're going to continue doing what we do, which is come up with innovative ways to move the camera. We've got some projects that are going on that are kind of completely unrelated to the film and film and cinema industry. But uh, I think we're just going to keep uh, focusing on coming up with innovative ways to move the camera and fun tools to make people's lives more fun and get stable shots. Cool. And you're probably listening to f user feedback and adding bits and pieces to existing systems, right? To yeah, for sure. Back. I mean, we have a really broad customer base. Um, you know, a lot of guys want wheels uh, to control the Mobi, so we're working on that. We just came out with this professional controller. So there's a huge diversity in what people want, you know, from kind of people that don't have a big legacy in the film and video industry. They kind of have an idea of what they want, and then there's guys that are working on huge productions, and they know exactly what they want. And we're, you know, I get emails from Larry McConkie, and he says, you know, this, this, and this are completely wrong on the movie. You got to fix it. And we say, okay, we'll, we'll work on it, Larry. <laughs> What's the, the the number one thing that people want changed about it? If you can make anything out? I mean, I think people, <clears throat> the thing that people run into the most is understanding how to balance it. So 
I think the core technology, like if I were to hand a, a movie that's balanced and tuned to anybody, they're going to create stable footage. But I think the thing we're really focusing on is how to get somebody from not knowing anything about it to a properly set up gimbal better. So we've, we're putting a lot of effort into refining the user experience as far as setup and balancing and uh, just education, really. Cool. Yeah. So NAB's over. Are you happy with the results, uh, the yeah. outcome of the show? It was really fun. Yeah. yeah it was great. To, uh, we had probably like 10 gimbals live at the booth and just to, I kind of stood back and watched at one point and people playing with it, handing it to the next person, you know, it was cool at one point it didn't come back to a free fly person for probably half an hour. <laughs> it's also hilarious well, to see what people if do. At least it comes back, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> one of them tried to escape. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you called him, I guess. Yeah, we did. Uh, it's also hilarious to see what people will do with the gimbal. I mean, they just try and shake it to death. Yeah. It's like, you know, <laughs> is that how you normally film? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I did this test. You probably saw it. I think I just sent it to you with yeah. out of the car. Yeah. The vibration. Yeah. I mean, we tried to find the worst street in Vienna <laughs> up on that hill. Yeah. And just, you know, it was a 50 kilometer per hour zone that we drove 100 or something. It, like. <laughs> But it was super stable, so that it's, was good. It's it's pretty wild sometimes when you're shooting and you're thinking, man, this is just going to look terrible. Yeah, exactly. Then you exactly. look at it later and it's like, oh. Same thing with, I tried attaching it to the, uh, what's it called? The Easy rig? Easy rig, yep. yeah, right. It felt like it's completely going up and down all the way. Yeah. But it was super stable. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. a bit hard to monitor footage like this. Yeah. But it works. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I hope we can do that again, like maybe in the next show and see what's new then. And Great, hopefully. How the whole market has changed again. I know, we got to get home and get back to work so we have something interesting to show next year. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks. That was another episode of Cinema 5D on the couch. Uh, thanks to all our sponsors. First and foremost, B&H, who supply all the equipment we use here. Um, Vitek Videocom, Zeiss, and Tools on Air. See you on the next show. Thanks. <laughs>